I, if I could have just two minutes of your time, I'd like to show you how I digitally catalog my firearms collection. I've been doing this for quite a few years, um, and I do it so that if there's ever a fire or a theft or any kind of loss, I can show my insurance company exactly what I've got. And it's a good way to keep track of your serial numbers. Uh, it's a handy reference if you ever need that. And what I do is I'll just take, um, I've used a variety of cameras. You could use just a small pocket digital like this, or you could use the big Nikon there. Helps to have a wide angle lens because if you're gonna do a rifle, it's hard to get the whole thing in frame. Because what you wanna do typically is to shoot from overhead. I like to use a neutral background such as a white styrofoam board and try to get the whole thing in frame. You don't have to make it simple like that. You could make it kind of cool and make it like a project. And you could take a still image out of a video and that way you could have a picture of the gun actually firing. That'd be kind of neat. Um, or you could just have a picture of yourself holding the gun that somebody takes uh, holding it up like this or like this. Uh, handguns are easy to do. Rifles are a little more difficult because of the size. So that's where a wide angle would come in handy. Uh, or you could take the gun on an angle, just hold it up in front of a tripod. Uh, whatever you come up with. But the filing method is simply to take the manufacturer followed by the name of the gun. Like if it's, a, uh, say it's an FN SCAR, you take FN so that'd be under the Fs. SCAR would be next and then the serial number. And that's how I would name that digital image file. Then you take that file and you put it in a folder and you can name your folder anything you want. Uh, you could call it Gun World or, uh, you know, uh, my guns. Uh, if you don't want your wife to see it, you better name it uh, carburetor parts or something like that. You gotta be creative there. Uh, something that she wouldn't be interested in seeing. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, another cool thing you can do is you can put your images on your iPod or iPhone. And that way when you're sitting in the dentist office, uh, waiting to get drilled, uh, you can have something to cheer you up uh, rather than reading National Geographic magazine uh, or Woman's Day. So uh, this is uh, my method. I take the white piece of styrofoam, set it on the floor or outside on a picnic table or on the ground. On the ground works pretty good because then you can get back away from it do it in an open shade outdoors uh, underneath a tree or on an overcast day if you happen to have skylight windows that works great uh, put your neutral background on the floor and uh, I like to use the timer feature on a camera if it has it see if you can get the thing on a tripod and get it steady or get it out on an arm of some sort, even if you have to improvise something. Using the, the timer allows you to get a perfectly clear image uh, because there's no wiggle. And I, I do that virtually for every one of these shots. And uh, once you have your image, uh, transfer it to your computer hard drive, name the file, organize it. Then you can put it, like I said, into uh, another you know, like your iPod, you know, just uh, upload it to iTunes. Uh, that's one way to carry it around, but you want a method that you're not gonna lose. Uh, y you could store it on a disc, but I think for archival quality, archival uh, integrity, you probably wanna put it on a USB drive. And then you take that and put it somewhere safe like a, a bank vault box or bring it to work and put it in your desk drawer or in your locker because you want to have that thing safely stored in case your house burns down. That way you've got your 
Catalog inventory of every gun you own and the serial number so you can prove to the insurance man that you indeed had all that stuff uh, rather than sitting there scratching your head. One time, uh, about 12 years ago, 13 years ago, I had my house broken into and two of my firearms were not in the safe because I had just gotten back from shooting with my son and I didn't have the serial number recorded. At least I didn't think I did because that was just before I started cataloging them. That's probably what started me in this process. And I didn't even realize that it was a Dan Wesson 22 had been stolen. Uh, I was gone, I came home, the door was kicked in. There was a $3,000 laptop computer sitting right on the kitchen countertop that hadn't been touched. So I actually thought that they got scared off or never made it inside the house at all. And uh, turns out when I was looking at pictures from a shooting, my son and I, uh, I, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, you know, I don't remember putting that gun back in the safe. Um, because I wanted to clean it first and uh, I started looking around for it. I couldn't find the gun or the uh, the case that it was in because I remembered what case I had in. Well, yes, turns out that a month after the fact, after I had the cops over and check out the damage from the door and everything, the gun was indeed stolen. But I couldn't make a police report on it because I didn't have the serial number. About two years later, maybe longer, I'm cleaning out a file in my gun room and there's the uh, original receipt I found in a, in a file. Normally I keep those in a fireproof safe and I keep them all in a fireproof safe now. But I found that file and I found the serial number and I went to the police station with it and I contacted them, told them the whole story. They thought it was weird, of course. Um, you know, reporting a theft so much so long after the fact but now every year I get a report uh, or a, a, some kind of a written uh, request from the police department asking if I found the gun if the gun was replaced by insurance and if uh, I would press charges if the person that stole it is caught like if they try to pawn it or something and I always check yes of course I would uh, it's never turned up in all these years, so I doubt if it will. Uh, I didn't end up making a uh, uh, homeowner's insurance uh, claim on it because you know, it was just too far after the fact. Uh, I think there's a, I did contact my uh, agent, I guess after a certain amount of time, uh, they don't want to know you. <laughs> uh, that Dan Wesson 22 that was stolen, I actually only paid $100 for it, and I replaced it with my Smith & Wesson 617 stainless. Uh, it would have been nice if they would have picked up the tab on that. Um, but anyway, back to the uh, the whole reason. That's the whole reason we do this. That's why we go ahead and uh, catalog our firearms. Hey, even if you're going to just jot down the serial numbers on a piece of paper, you know, the manufacturer model and serial number and just keep that at work that's good enough it's just a lot more fun to do it with a camera and if you take a video still uh, of the thing going off with brass kicking out and a big fireball even better yet so I appreciate you watching my videos sounds like it's uh, time to end this one thanks a lot for watching